As a nation gears for another round of elections, a number of young people have stated their interest in running for various offices. One of such persons is here today. He is Ayodeji Oloni Moyo, also known as Awolo Moyo. Ayodeji is vying to be the youngest ever member of the Ogun State House of Assembly, Ikene constituency. He joins us here today to discuss the importance of youths in politics. Thanks for joining us, um, Ayodeji, on Plus Politics today. Thank you for having me. All right, let's really talk about this uh, thing. You know, young people use inclusiveness, social inclusiveness, when it comes to politics in Nigeria. Would you really say that um, over time the young people have been given a voice, you know, or have a voice that is heard? Well, young people are trying, they're trying to take their voice because we know that we should have a voice, but we don't have it. It's not being listened to. So that's why people like me are starting to stand up and be counted and at least run for office so that it's not said that we didn't run and that's why we are not being represented. So that's why, for instance, I have stood up to run and what a lot of people that are running. So yeah. many. Which is a good thing, really. He said uh, young people are not re don't really have a voice. What could be the reason for this? Is it um, a thing of um, the fact that um, some say that um, they don't have the pedigree, they are, not, uh, they are inexperienced, or they don't really have all that it takes you know, to champion the nation to where it should be going? I don't believe experience is one of the major things to look for in government. One of the major things to look for is passion. And that's one thing you can find in most young people. So you can run a government with just sheer passion? Not with just sheer passion. You obviously have to take the experience of the old people. You, that's why you have advisors in governments. That's why you have people, um, personal, um, permanent secretaries and all of that. You have to look at the old ways before you move forward. What are the mistakes that they've made? How do you build on it? But the world is changing. Young people are beginning to do things that old people cannot even comprehend. So it is best to let us take charge of the nation while you advise us on where and how to steer. All right. Is it um, a fact that um, they are not really going about it the right way, in as much as you have said rightly that um, a lot of people are going to be seen this time around in this dispensation, you know, vying for different political offices. But over time, you find that, that there is a whole lot of advocacy and it ends on social media, on elections, uh, election days, that is. You don't get to see much young people coming out, you know, to you know, cast your vote and uh, you know, exercise your franchise. Well, I understand that, but at the end of the day, all we can do is hope and beg them to actually come out and vote. Because a lot of people, regardless of what I believe or you believe, they believe or think that Nigeria has failed them. Do you understand? And they don't believe that their vote counts. And it is, it is really a lot of people's mindsets that if they vote, it's not going to be counted. And that's one thing that a lot of people are trying to change. There's even an, a, a, an organization, they call them Yaga Africa. Mm. One thing they are pushing for is for young people to run, for young people to vote, and for young people to be elected into office. They were the ones that even championed the not too young to run movements. I'm not a part of it, but I'm definitely a, I have gained from it, mm. do you understand? Because that's why I'm able to even say that I want to run today. Okay, fine. It's a good thing you mentioned the not too young uh, to run. You know, it is actually a law right now in Nigeria. Yes, you know, is. But over time, the young people have also complained that uh, in as much as they've been given a platform you know, to contest you know, for elections, there's still this issue of um, money politics, uh, which uh, most of them you know, find as barriers you know, to contesting and of course uh, to do the proper electioneering. How do young people surmount that particular challenge? Well, I believe that we are pushing a lot of people, a lot of state governments, a lot of state parties are pushing for a cut in the electoral form price. Do you understand? A lot of people are pushing for 60% cuts because at the end of the day, we, if you look at the minimum wage and a lot of things that we earn in the country, you can't expect someone like me, for instance, to bring out five million or one million to drop just for the form. Let's forget um, campaigning and everything else just to buy a form, one million. I think that's a lot, do you understand? So I believe that a lot of these things need to be revisited, do you understand? And also, the, one of the things that I was very happy about was the 
direct primaries being a permanent or a, a being by force. So every party would have to conduct direct primaries. Mm -hmm. I was very happy about that, but the fact that it will, um, the new act was passed without the clause the of direct, direct primaries, direct and of course, consensus. I was. It was very. It was a little disappointing because. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Just because continue. most people, most young people, are counting on the votes of masses rather than the uh, delegates picked to represent them, which is what. Do you really believe in the electoral process, or do young people believe in the electoral process? You just talked about um, the new um, electoral act, you know, which is being amended. You know, you talked about direct indirect primaries and, of, of course, uh, consensus primaries. You are vying, you know, to get into the Ogun State um, House of Assembly, uh, specifically in Ikene constituency. You know, do you really think uh, with this new development, the young people are actually going to be channeled out and presented before? you know, the electorate, you know, because that's another thing to want to vie, then uh, another option, another stumbling block might be the primaries. Well, I won't lie to you, a lot of people that are, are coming out believe that there's a chance, do you understand? But at the end of the day, because we're younger, we have less experience, we have less um, relationships with the people that are actually in the party with the leadership of the party now if it's by consensus all that all the people that are going to vote are the leadership of the party so you can't compare someone that has been in politics for four years to someone that has been in politics for 40 50 years do you understand so it's not the process that we are we have an issue with do you understand we just think that maybe some things should be changed. And it's getting better. If you look at it, it's not the same way it was in 2015. All them laws have been passed for the 2019 election and laws have been passed for the 2023 election. It's getting better slowly, but surely. Okay, fine. You uh, want to be um, a lawmaker in yes, Ogun State and specifically want to represent your people in Ikene. And you come from a background, uh, in a, a pedigree from... Um, a name which is actually a household one in Nigeria, that's the Awolowo dynasty, you know, uh, but what would you be doing differently? Because um, I don't know, your grandfather or great-grandfather, great-grandfather, great you know, Bafemi Awolowo, you know, had passion, you know, he had great vision for Nigeria. And you talked about him, aside from having, you know, the political experience and passion, is another factor that should drive a, any young person who wants to, you know, vie for political office. You know, what's the what's your passion for Nigeria? What uh, does the development of Nigeria mean to you? The development of Nigeria is everything to me. At the end of the day, we don't have another home. This is our home. This is our country. And I want, I say one thing that I don't want my children to live in the same Nigeria that I live in. I lived in. I believe in a united. Um, prosperous Nigeria that can work for you and I. And if we cannot make that happen, our children are going to suffer for it. If you heard during the NSAS um, protest, there were a couple of people that were saying they are fighting because their parents did not fight for their country. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that my children would say that about me because I would fight to the best of my ability. I say one thing sometimes to some people say, I don't want to die, but I will gladly die for my country. All right, fine, good thing. It's really also an interesting development to find that young people are also in um, you know, a decision-making process in Nigeria. You can mention a lot of them. You know, in, um, I know there are some in you know, your state, and of course, even our Minister of um, you know, Sports Development, Sunday Da, is also a young person. But then again, the issue would be that um, some young people are saying that uh, the older generation, as it were, would not necessarily give them the opportunity. How would they actually solve that particular stumbling block? How would they wrestle power away from the people who have been there almost uh, for a lifetime, as it is? Well, at the end of the day, we're not trying to force power out of anybody's hands. What we're trying to do is make it work for you and I work for everybody, do you understand? But I understand that obviously there, will be, there are people who are gaining from it being only in their hands. But at the end of the day, this is a democracy. Majority colors of votes. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is work for the democracy, or work for the majority, sorry, so that everybody realizes that, oh, this is actually possible, and they come out and vote. If you think about it, when, um, our president was running for office. He was running against an incumbent, but he made people believe in him and people came out and voted an incumbent party out. So it's not that it's impossible, it's a possibility. Do you understand? Even though he was old, but if we can strategize properly, it can be 
used for us young people. Let's talk about your constituency, Ikene, that you actually uh, are eyeing. You know, what would you say would be your major strength? And uh, if you have um, threats, what are the opportunities you see there? My major strength is the fact that I've been in, I've been there forever, for a while now. You've been forever. in politics forever? Not or how? in politics, in, um, in um, Ikene. Ikene. Okay. I schooled there. I went to Babcock University, which is in addition in the Ikene community. Mm. And they are the biggest institution in the entire place. I was the director of socials. So I did a lot of work there and I also did social work and I, based on my course and my work, um, my office in school mm. I had did a lot of outreaches to the community so I'm very I would say I'm very popular in the community now threats I would say that I'm running against an incumbent do you understand and a lot of other I don't think I can discuss that on air with okay, you okay fine I understand but, okay so <laughs> let's talk about one other issue that also you know creeps up when we talk about um, young people uh inclusion you know getting into the whole machinery of government and all of that which is that of um god fatherism it's been like there for like for almost you know for would you really say it is a good thing and uh, should young people also go that way of having godfathers who may believe in them or do you actually believe in godfatherism is it a good development in nigerian politics godfatherism is taken to an extreme in nigerian politics godfatherism is just meant to be mentoring which is mm. happens in every other sector business christianity islam do you understand you have someone that you go to for advice and all of that no matter what it is you do but in in our climate is taking to an extreme position so i won't say it's a bad thing but we need to be smart if we need to pick godfathers in picking our godfathers not just to get to the post but what would they actually help us with would they help us lead the nation better or would they help us bleed the nation dry mm. do you understand you need to get your your values right while picking a godfather all right. Over time, um, the young people, uh, the ones who use the stooges, you know, by uh, politicians, uh, you know, by um, unscrupulous uh, people, over time, uh, because of issues of um, unemployment, you know, they have um, somehow taken to youthful vices such as, uh, you know, crime and uh, other terrible things that are happening in the country. You know, what would you say to the young person who doesn't believe um, in the entity called Nigeria, who feels that um, there is no hope and um, feels that um, in as much as um, people like you are coming out to say that um, there is hope for tomorrow, there's still some element of doubt within them? Well, I would, I would love to speak to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one because there's not one message to every Nigerian mm. to make them believe in a better country. But one thing I would say is, even though our parents, our ancestors, everybody has been fighting for a better country, it has become better than it was, do you understand? And once we don't stop the fights, someday, eventually, we would win this fight against corruption, against whatever it is we're fighting against, against unemployment. We can win it, and we would. As long as there are people to fight that good fight, we would eventually come out on top. If you were to prefer solutions um, to the main issue bugging Nigeria right now, which is that of what insecurity. Insecurity. How would you go about it? Well, I, if I want to list that out, it would be a lot. But I would just give you a few points. But if you want to go through it, intensely i think you should go to my website iodejimuyo.com which you should do it's one of the things i okay. did yeah iodej goes promoting himself specifically now if you were to talk about i know there have been some um court you know um issues in some state in the in the southwest and of course over the time the young people are the ones i'm involved uh, how would you address the issue how would you ask them you know or what would you tell them to do to channel their energies into other positive ventures well insecurity wise i think the major thing we have an issue with i believe we need to start doing community policing community I don't, policing. yes i don't think it makes sense that we have the federal states and local governments and we just have the federal police it doesn't make sense to me as a person and it doesn't make sense to a lot of people a lot of 
a lot of people have pushed for state policing and I don't understand why it's we are still where we are, do you understand? It just for instance, I was talking to a general yesterday because when I'm coming up with um agendas, I don't just say it's off the top of my head. I need to consult with those that have been in the system, those that have suffered from the system, if you get what I mean. That's and he was telling me how if there's a for instance, if there's kidnappings all of a sudden, a somebody that's in the community that's policing would be able to fish out that this person doesn't belong in this community. Do you understand? Even maybe if the person has come back from somewhere when he was there before, he would be able to recognize that okay, this is one of us. Do you understand? And that way they would be able to channel their energies with obviously there will still be a federal right. police and make the state or wherever safer. All right, thank you so much, Ayo Deji. Uh, we wish you the best, and uh, we hope that young people, you know, get all the limelight and um, the attention, and of course, uh, the recognition that they indeed uh, deserve. Because I'm also a young person. Thank you so much for thank your thoughts on the show today. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you, Nigerians. Uh, up next, uh, Nigerians tell us uh, what they uh, think uh, need to be done for more youths in the country to go into politics, and when we return. I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. For us to involve youths, I'm telling you, it's not right yet. They're not right for it. The only people that could get involved when you say youths, get people who are really interested in the politics. They could be the uh, youths, but of middle age people who are knowledgeable, people who are very, very, uh, they have a wide scope of experience at their place of work. And they could start from their local governments. If there can be an, a, a conducive environment that um, youth can participate without grudges, and if um, government can create um, a good platform, platform in the sense that it will not be money driven. People that have vision, that have mission, that are articulate, that have passion for change in this nation will be will have that zeal to join political parties. Now they are seeing it as a as a a joke. A joke in the sense that best brains are not being attracted to politics now. But if there is a conducive environment if uh, uh, there is no enmity, uh, things are working in order. People, more youth will participate in politics. Um, one of the things we can do to improve or to involve youth in this day's politics is one. You know, first thing is to bring down the age barrier which um, youth can can be eligible to be enlisted for positions, and then two again. The old generations or the old people now should know that they have missed the, you know, have missed their home time because this time is actually for the youth. Like uh, people do say during the Obasanjo's era that uh, youth are the future leaders of tomorrow, and uh, because of a lot of things that are going on uh, now, because you, the one you doesn't have money to sponsor the political their political career. And uh, there's uh, something I, I do advise the, some of the youth. You have to learn. You have to start. You must start from somewhere. Not minding that uh, some of the leaders are not. Uh, uh, they are not trying. They, are, they don't want to bring the, the younger ones up. But you have to put your head in. Like uh, I have to give the kudos to the other some of the state government. Some young ones are now getting themselves involved in the House Assembly uh, uh, post. Uh, advise us, SPA, SPA, this, SPA, that. From there, you can raise really small funds down to sponsor your political career. And that's the voice of the people there. The Nigerian youth has, since our nation's return to democratic rule in 1999, been kept on the wings and fringes of leadership. All the problems have been deadly not today in Nigeria and indeed Africa are anchored on leadership. It is time for the Nigerian youth to be involved in the decision-making table of our country with youthful, vibrant and dynamic political leaders piloting the affairs of governance across all member states. No doubt Nigeria and Nigerians will sing a new song of progress 
development, and a peaceful country. My name is Justin Akadonye, plus politics returns again tomorrow. Bye for now.